welcome to our high-tech warehouse here at Santa Cruz Bicycles. This is where the stuff that gets turned into bicycles starts, a lot of it. And here's a bicycle. Francis is over here today looking at our newest and greatest, which will be launching April 1st, which means you're seeing this either on April Fool's Day or right after, and it's up to you to determine whether it's a hoax or not. Um, it has been talked about a bit. It has been ballyhooed and bantered around, and I'm amazed that we've kept a lid on it for as long as we have. This is the Tallboy LT. The one I have here is the Tallboy LT Carbon. We're also going to be introducing Tallboy LT Aluminum at the same time. These two bikes go live concurrently. 135 millimeters rear travel VPP suspension. Carbon fiber frame on this one. Tapered head tube. ISCG mounts down here on the bottom bracket. The carbon one is our first foray into a 142 by 12 rear axle as well. Our carbon fiber process is pretty unique. We use a one piece layup for the front triangle, which means that this whole front triangle, including the shock mounts, the ISCG tabs, lower link mount, these are all molded in at the same time together. There aren't any aluminum inserts, there aren't any little pieces or ears that are wrapped on afterwards. And the tubes themselves, if you, kinda, if you wanna call them tubes, it's actually a monocoque structure, are one single carbon fiber structure. So it's not like you have a tube, some reinforcing material on another tube. The good thing about doing things like this as a one piece structure is you can really optimize the efficiency of your material use. You can put the material where you need it, so you can get a lot of strength up and around the usual places where people are afraid of bikes breaking. Underneath the down tube, you can put more material. Uh, on the top side of the down tube, you can put less. And you end up being able to create a stronger, stiffer structure with less material. That said, frame weight on this carbon fiber bike, 5.3 pounds. Again, it's a 135 millimeter travel bike. 5.3 pound frame weight with shock. Uh, as a basis of comparison with the Blur TRC, our 26 inch wheel bike weighs right around five pounds. Our existing tall boy with four inches of travel, 100 mil travel is right around five pounds. So this is a light bike with a more aggressive intent than what you would expect from our light, you know, from this sort of weight range. It's a pretty burly machine that uh, has a lot more going for it than just being light. The uh, intent of this bike is it's really more moving into the all-mountain terrain. Um, the the 100 mil travel tall boy is a really versatile bike. It can do anything from cross-country racing to, you know, I know some people are even doing Super D events on him. Uh, ben Cathro just was racing one of the first rounds of Super D Enduro over in Scotland. Um, but as uh, as the 29 inch wheels gained more acceptance and as people have figured out how to make them handle after many years of wandering in the desert, uh, there has been a segment of riders looking for something more aggressive, able to, to hit bigger lines and bigger terrain. Uh, if this was to have a 26 inch wheel counterpart, this would sit kind of conceptually between our Blur LT and the Nomad as the 26 inch wheel alternatives. It's, it's able to handle a fair bit of abuse. 135 millimeters travel with this size wheel creates a bike that can handle a whole lot of stuff. Where our media camp was out in Sedona and we were launching these things off of cliffs. Uh, bringing back the whole notion of hucking to flat. Okay, that part's the April Fool's part. No one was hucking to flat. But you can, you can hit things a lot harder on this than you could on the regular Tallboy. Uh, it's able to withstand that sort of riding. We spec it around 140 millimeter fork. You could probably put as long a fork as you want on there, but it handles really beautifully at this, at this travel. Uh, with this fork spec, Fox 34 here, you're talking 69 and a half degree head angle. Uh, that's a degree and a half slacker than the current Tallboy, which is, you know, compared to 26 inch numbers, that doesn't seem that slack, but that's pretty raked out for this size and stability of wheel. It's a good big, big terrain bike. Downeyville will be destroyed by these. Yeah, what else can we talk about? VPP suspension. We'll go through it again because we need to. If you take a look here, the characteristics that define VPP suspension are two short, stiff little links. Upper link, lower link. They rotate counter to each other. This one rotates this way. This one rotates this way. What that allows us to do, aside from having an incredibly stiff and solid rear triangle, which doesn't have any flex to it, 
and stiff little links that don't have any flex to them, is we can configure our shock rate characteristics however we want them to be. Generally, and with this bike, we've got a slight falling rate at the beginning of travel that then turns into a slight rising rate at the end of travel. It gives you really good initial small bump compliance and then gives you a good ramp up as you come towards full suspension to, or full travel to prevent your bottom out. The, uh, the suspension itself rides on angular contact bearings throughout. Um, angular contact bearings are great. You can preload them just enough to take, make sure there's no slop in them. And then the bolts are these 15 millimeter diameter aluminum axles that thread through into the frame on the other side and then have a little conical washer, a locking collet head we call it, that you screw in here and it expands the top of the bolt and locks it in on this side. So you end up with a really stiff, uh, easily maintainable long life structure or bearing, bearing surface that lasts forever, works smoothly, and doesn't need a whole lot of maintenance. When it does need maintenance, it's easy to get to. Carbon fiber. The aluminum one, right here. Francis, look at it. Look at it. There it is. Everything about this is the same as the carbon fiber bike, except for the fact that it uh, weighs a little bit more because it's made out of aluminum and costs quite a bit less. Retail price for this frame and shock is going to be $18.99 for frame and shock. Uh, for this one, carbon fiber, I think we're talking $26.99. You may have to edit that out. Well, or you'll just put it in there and Francis will put something in that says it's correct later because I got it wrong. But I think that's right. That's about what we got. Francis is probably going to take some pictures of them, go ride them. He gets to keep one of these for the weekend. Lucky dog. It might rain. There you go.